radio has been around about a hundred years now. In the early days, it was stationary. You had to be connected to a long antenna and to a ground, which meant a pipe that went into the ground, like, for example, plumbing. So you weren't going anywhere. From the earliest days, people wished radio could be mobile. But early radio was about as mobile as a washing machine. One pioneer, a little bit later, had an emphasis on making radios that would be mobile. Not in your pocket, but in a car. They named their brand after that concept. Motorola. You've heard of it. And when they put a radio in your car, they put this decal on your window to let the world know. But there was a dream in radio that was not fulfilled until 1947. The dream was to have a radio that you could listen to while walking around, that you could carry in your pocket and not be attached to antenna or ground or anything. To be sure, many radios were made that called themselves pocket radios, and they were small, but they had to be attached to antennas and grounds in order to work, so you wouldn't be walking around listening to these. They left that fact out in naming their product a pocket radio, or in marketing it. Can you believe it? Companies lying to consumers a hundred years ago? Well, fellow consumer, the snake oil has been pouring even longer than that. Here's the Spencer pocket radio from the late 1920s. Pretty primitive. Not much here you could recognize as a radio, but it was a radio. You tuned it by raising and lowering the coil. But though it fit in your pocket, it wasn't mobile. It required an external antenna and ground and, of course, headphones. In 1947, the Belmont folks introduced this the Belmont Boulevard 5P113. Obviously, this is a very stylish device. What is not so obvious today is how high-tech it was in its day. It did not have transistors in it. The transistor hadn't been invented until that same year and wasn't ready for radio applications until the Region CTR1 transistor radio in 1954. No, the Belmont Boulevard had tubes in it, five subminiature tubes made by Raytheon. Unfortunately, speaker technology was lagging, so this radio played only through an earphone. But with five tubes, it had the power to pull in radio stations without external antenna or ground. And so the walking around radio was born. A real radio that fit in your pocket. A closer look at a couple of those tiny Raytheon tubes. The Belmont Boulevard, the first real pocket radio. <laughs> 